What is up YouTube? Today, I'll be giving you 10 tips that you need to know in Delta Force. I do wish that I knew these a lot earlier, but I have suffered now so that you don't have to. So let's get straight into it. Tip number one is how to properly use the weapon share codes. My latest video was an M4 build, and I posted the share code on the description, yet I know that a lot of people were not able to actually use it for one reason or another, maybe there's a bug in the game, or maybe it's just an error of the user, but regardless, I really want to show you how to do this properly, just in case that maybe some issues can be fixed. First, you have to make sure that you actually have the weapon equipped. You cannot have some other weapon equipped, otherwise when you actually hit the share button here and try to import, you'll notice that it just does not work. It doesn't let you apply the loadout at all. So you do have to make sure that you have the base weapon that you want to import the build for. This example would be the M4. We go to the modify screen, loadout. You have to make sure that you click the share loadout button here, import the loadout as in paste it. You also have to make sure that you end up copying the whole code. So starting from the M4A1 all the way to the end where it says warfare, you do have to copy the full thing. I made this mistake the first time that I tried to import a build, so I don't want you to make it too. Now you also have to make sure that you do press the little lookup button. Once you do, then everything should show up. All of these icons here that have the little filter icon, that means that these attachments have actually been calibrated and the import will work for the calibration too. So now we hit the apply and here we have it. This is the full build that I uploaded a couple days ago for my M4. Next, you of course want to hit the save button and then save it to whichever slot you want to actually have it on. Now tip number two, you might notice that I actually have lasers now in my build and that is because I've tested laser versus no laser and you might think that having a laser might actually hurt your stats because of what it says on the screen. But yet if we look at this clip here, I'm going to put them side by side. You'll notice how the no laser is actually slower by three frames. Three frames frames might not seem like a lot, but all my recordings are happening at 60 FPS. So one frame happens every 16.6666 repeating milliseconds. So that means that three frames is a roughly a 50 millisecond decrease in your ADS time, which is huge when you think about where the ADS speed currently is. So make sure to actually put your lasers on and keep them on throughout the game because these stats do not work unless the laser light is actually enabled. And as a little bonus, you definitely should always keep the red laser instead of any other laser because it is the least visible. Now, tip number three is a riser on the riser to increase your handling. So let's take off all our optics here and notice how on the details here, we have a handling of 61 with our current ADS speed to 288 milliseconds. So now let's say that you wanted to put on an optic, any optic at all. Let's say the XRO quick response sight because it is a green dot. It's in my opinion, the best one. This would actually decrease your handling by two, which means that your current ADS speed, your sprint fire delay, your movement speed, all this would be decreased. In this case, 301 milliseconds for ADS speed, which is the most important one in my opinion. But what if we actually put on a riser? You notice the handling actually goes up by two, so this would immediately nullify the effects of the quick response site right here. If we go into details, we notice that the handling is actually much better, where our current ADS speed is actually 275 milliseconds, sprint fire delay to 200, movement speed is also better. So let's Put that on first now let's say that we were gonna put on the optic now you'll notice our handling is actually down to 288 milliseconds which is pretty much the original stats but we can actually take it one step further and actually put on another riser which increases our handling by another plus two therefore our details here our handling is much much better so now if we go to this option here to put on the riser optic our handling goes down to 63 instead this is much better than our original number that we had. So let's install that. You always want to make sure that you do this whenever you're putting on an optic. And of course, because you have this type of riser, you can put the laser right here if you want. Now for tip number four, I want to make the point that the plus control on the details here, let's say that you have control of 67. If you find an attachment that actually has plus control, let's say plus two, like this resonant ergonomic grip here, you actually want to click the details and find out if it's truly better. A lot of the time, plus control does not actually mean it's better. As you notice, we have plus two control compared to what our current attachments are, but yet every single stat for your recoil is worse. So you always want to make sure that whenever you're putting on an attachment, you really check the sub attributes here, not just the overall stat. This is something that took me a while to realize, and this is how I'm creating my builds nowadays. And a lot of people don't know about this. So make sure to note this one down. And now in that same regard, I want to stress the point for tip number five, that you don't overlook the weapon details. They give you a lot of information. For example, the ranges, how much damage you're going to do in each body part, which is very important. You can really get some good information 
information out of this. And then on the second tab here, you have the most important stats in my opinion, which are all the recoil stats for the weapon. On the right side, you get a current modifications versus the old modifications. You always want to compare that not only these look better after you make a modification, but that these numbers are better. This will determine how the recoil pattern actually looks. And then on the third tab, you have the handling stat, where it tells you everything about the ADS speed, sprint to fire delay, ADS movement speed, and all this information that you really want to keep in mind, because you don't want to go so heavy on recoil control that then these stats become horrible. Now, tip number six, notice how I have no issues with sacrificing stability, and that is because stability is a fixed pattern. As you notice, it's an infinity sign. If you look at the little green dot here, notice how it's doing an infinity sign. It's just moving like this. The worse your stability, the more that it moves. And now you hold your breath and it's not moving nearly as much, but you can always compensate for it while you're using your aim because you know it is a fixed pattern. So if you know where you're at in the pattern, you can actually control for that. Now, the last tip that I want to give you inside of the menu here is that you really want to make sure that you're not missing out on all of these challenges. There's a lot of people that have asked me in game how I got this camo because I think it looks very good and they don't know how to get it because they are missing out on these challenges. You do want to make sure that you are completing every Every single one of these within the time period allotted and you actually redeem your points so make sure to check every single one of these challenges you get some very good rewards like camouflage for your vehicles gear coupons for the other game mode the extraction game mode and weapon xp and really good looking camos so make sure that you always redeem all your challenges and complete them tip number eight are healing clouds so let's switch over to stinger and get in game let's spawn a little bit further back here so that i can show you this so you're a medic now there's a smoke right in front of you and there's teammates around it, let's say. When you actually go into your medic gun, you can shoot it into the smoke and the whole thing becomes a healing cloud. Every single teammate in here will be healing. Now notice that that only works for that type of grenade. It does not work for this type of medic smoke. Let's say I just shoot into it and it does not do anything. Now, a really quick and easy way to see which smoke is which is by noticing how dark it is. The regular smoke grenade is a lot darker than the smokes that come out of the swarm. So if the smoke grenade looks like this, then you know that you can definitely shoot into it and get the healing smoke. But if it looks like a white smoke, it will not be good for that. Tip number nine is that vehicle repair and ammo stations work for helicopters also. This is something that I had no idea about until very late on, and I might regret putting this out there because helicopters are already really strong. Now you might have noticed these vehicle supply stations that are laying around throughout the map, which you might think that only tanks or land vehicles can use them, but no, as long as you hover over them or get really close to them in general, while you're in a helicopter, it will replenish all your ammunition and it will repair your helicopter. This is very good for when the enemy team has a lot of anti-air capabilities so you need to repair more often than your cooldown has on the repair. So you can take a little break from the fight, get close to the resupply station, wait about 5 seconds, and then you have full health and full ammo, and you can get right back into the fight. Tip number 10 is that you can customize not only the vehicle camos, but you can actually customize the vehicle weapons. This is something that embarrassingly enough, I found out 3 days ago, even after having about 40 hours in the game already. Each vehicle has their own vehicle level depending on how much you use them, and then when you hit the custom button right here, you notice that you have options to change your primary weapon for the helicopter for example you can have even more lock-on missiles or air-to-air lock-on missiles you can also change the weapons of the gunner and the appearance for example on my fsv wheeled tank destroyer here i changed my weapon pod from the 40 millimeter shotgun to the top shooting chamber which is a anti-aircraft weapon and then for my lav i have changed the appearance from the default to the snow but this is very nice to have because there's many options here of how many weapons you can actually change you can go from the 20 millimeter auto cannon to the 30 millimeter auto cannon which can actually hurt things like tanks a lot more if you're in an anti-aircraft LAV. You also have different smoke grenades and this is really nice to know. This is really nice to have and I'm very embarrassed that I found out this late and maybe everybody else knew before I did but if you did not, here you go. Here's some new information for you. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm very hopeful that it was helpful. If it was, leave a like and I'll see you on the next one. Owl out.